Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a cubic system. I'll be presenting two approaches. Let's start with the first one. For my first approach, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that this is a homogeneous equation or system. So I'm going to replace y with kx. If you do it in the first equation, we get x cubed minus 3x times k squared x squared equals 1. Let's go ahead and finalize this first. Uh, we're going to get x cubed minus 3k squared x cubed equals 1. And then if you do it in the second equation, we're going to get the following. We're going to get 3x squared multiplied by kx minus k cubed x cubed equals 1 and if we simplify this we're going to get 3k x cubed minus k cubed x cubed equals 1. So we have this system, a different system this time and now we have a common factor. So the motivation behind this type of substitution is that the degree of the terms if you look at everything here they're all cubic. Great so Let's go ahead and take out x cubed from the first equation and we're, we'll do the same thing for the second one. So this gives us x cubed times 1 minus 3k squared. And if you do it in the second equation and then divide these side by side, we actually get something nice. And since they're both equal to 1, their ratio is also going to be 1. But x cubed cancels out and we end up with a cubic equation in a single variable. Let's go ahead and distribute. 1 minus 3k squared equals 3k minus k cubed. So we're going to be solving for k values. Let's go ahead and put everything on the left hand side. k cubed minus 3k squared minus 3k plus 1 is equal to 0. Now we can group these terms and factor uh, first uh, by using sum of two cubes. And then factoring out negative 3k, we get a common factor. Now we're going to look at the difference of these two terms, k squared minus k plus 1 minus 3k. That gives us k squared minus 4k plus 1. And from here we get three solutions. Uh, I'm not going to fully find all the solutions here but I'm going to show you how to proceed and the rest is fairly easy. But let's go ahead and take a look at this one since this one is easier. This gives us k equals negative 1 and since k is basically y over x uh, or y equals kx, uh, we can turn this into y equals negative x. This is nice because this is something we can substitute into the equations and our first equation was x cubed minus 3xy squared equals 1. Let's go ahead and replace y with negative x. And if we do, we get x cubed plus 3x cubed. Obviously, we're going to replace y with, okay, that should be still be a minus sign, because we're going to square this, and that is going to be a negative. So here we go. x cubed minus 3 times negative x quantity squared equals 1. And that is just going to be negative 3x squared. So we're going to get negative 2x cubed. Okay, it's not a... Okay, great. All right, let me fix this real quick. Okay, so our first equation was x cubed minus 3xy squared equals 1. And then we're going to replace y with negative x. Okay, here we go. And then from here we get x cubed minus 3x cubed equals 1 and that gives us 2x cubed equals negative 1 x cubed equals negative 1 half and if we cube root both sides we get x equals cube root of negative 1 half you can also take the negative out if you want but that's no big deal we get the following and since y is the opposite of x in this case y can be written as the cube root of 1 half Okay, great. So this basically pair gives us one of the solutions. And the others are also very similar. For example, if you look at k squared minus 4k plus 1 equals 0. From here, we can basically get k minus 2 squared equals 3. And then by taking the square root of both sides, we get the following. k equals 2 plus minus the square root of 3. 
And then you can just you know, proceed as before, finding the corresponding x value, and then you can find the y value, so on and so forth. Okay, that basically is the first approach. And now let's go ahead and talk about the second approach. So the second approach is really cool because it uses a really nice idea. And now if you look at this uh, expression one more time, x cubed minus 3xy squared equals 1, and 3x squared y minus y cubed equals 1. So this should be familiar for some reason. For example, if you think about x minus y quantity cubed, you get the following, x cubed minus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared minus y cubed equals 1. Now, if you compare this expression to what we have, uh, they're kind of similar, but the problem is uh, this one comes with a positive sign. So we don't quite have that, but with a little twist, we can actually get what we want, and that is using complex numbers. So if you go out and cube x minus yi instead of x minus y, uh, you get the following. Let's go ahead and cube this expression here. That's going to give us x cubed minus 3xy squared. I'm going to skip some details here. Basically, uh, i cubed is equal to negative i, so on and so forth. You can figure out the details. But we're going to get x cubed minus 3xy squared. And then minus uh, the quantity inside the parentheses is going to be 3x squared y minus y cubed. And this is going to be the coefficient of i. Since we already know that this expression is basically 1 and this is also 1, from here we get the following. x minus y i cubed is equal to 1 minus i. So if we're looking for the x and y values, uh, we basically need to find the cube roots of 1 minus i. And there is three of them. Right? Let's go ahead and find the most basic one, and the others can be easily obtained by adding multiples of or just by adding 2 pi over 3. Because, as you know, on the complex plane, the cube roots of a complex number are going to be separated equally, right? And they're going to be 2 pi over 3 radians apart. Great. So how do you find the cube roots of 1 minus i? Let's go ahead and write it in the polar form first. So, and we, for that purpose, let's go ahead and graph it on the coordinate plane. So 1 minus i is going to be here. That's basically pi over 4 short of 2 pi. So in other words, 2 pi minus pi over 4. And that is going to be 7 pi over 4. That's the argument. So we can basically write 1 minus i as, and of course, we also have to find its modulus, which is um, root 2 over 2 in this case, or we can write it as 1 over root 2. Multiply by cosine 7 pi over 4 plus i times sine 7 pi over 4. So this is 1 minus i written in polar form or whatever form you want to call it. And now we're going to take cube roots of it. So when you take the cube root of this number, you're basically going to cube root the 1 over root 2, which gives us the 6 root of 2. And then uh, it's fairly easy. You just have to divide it by 3. It's going to give you 7 pi over 12 and then i sine 7 pi over 12. So that's going to be one of the solutions, obviously, because we're looking for uh, cube roots. But of course, you can find the real part, you're going to find the imaginary part, and then set the real part to x, set the imaginary part to y, so on and so forth. So x is going to equal 1 over root, uh, 1 over 6 root of 2 times cosine 7 pi over 2, and y is going to equal 1 over uh, 6 root of 2 multiplied by sine 7 pi over 2. Remember that x and y are real numbers here. i is just, uh, you know, going to stay as i. Okay, great. So we can pretty much do the same thing with the other solutions. And the other solutions are just going to be, if you just add uh, 2 pi over 3, uh, we're going to be getting 15 pi over 12. And then dot, 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 same thing for the sine. And the other solution is just going to be, this uh, 15 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 3, and that is going to be 23 pi over 12. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.